Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to continue on yet again with this Swedish series of beer reviews that I'm doing for you across the month of December. And we've got another new brewery to have a look at today. This is my very first encounter with these guys, but apparently they're very interesting because they very rarely brew the same beer more than once. So a proper kind of home brewer style brewery that's a proper small batch brewery so we're going to go to Gothenburg for this one or Jotobori as you would say in Swedish and we're going to visit Beer Bibliothek and the beer we're tasting tonight is their black IPA which is called Cascade and Columbus and it comes in at 6.9% so it should be a very nice beer for us to try and as I said they very rarely brew the same beer more than once so if you do come across these beers buy them up and try them because you may never see it again so that's the kind of motto I'm going to take with this brewery from now on if I see one of their beers I'll just buy it and have a go of it. it should be very very nice a lot of their beers are highly rated on rate beer and that website will very rarely lead you wrong when it comes to beer but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual websites are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I'll do from these guys in the fairly near future if I can find some more of their beers and there's also the usual social media things Facebook Twitter and untapped all the stuff for the channel please feel free to get in touch with me through whatever means you wish always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the videos to my Swedish viewers I do apologize if any of my Swedish pronunciations aren't quite right uh, but I'm just learning Swedish at the moment just started actually but please do let me know some of the other Swedish beers you'd like me to have a look at some of the Swedish stuff I've come across has been really top class so far so do let me know what your favorites are and I will see if I can review them for you but anyway to tell you about beer bibliotech so this brewery like I said are based in Gothenburg or Jotobori as you would say in Swedish and they were founded in 2013 by a multi national group of friends. So there's Adam Norman who's an Australian, there's Richard Bull who's a Kiwi New Zealander, Anders Hedlund who as you might guess is Swedish and then there's Daryl Denecker who's actually from South Africa. So Adam and Richard ran Bar Dopio in Gothenburg and Daryl and Anders were actually quite regular customers at the bar and often they used to talk to each other about beer. So one day they decided that they would buy a home brewing kit together and actually brew their own and it worked out pretty well for them. They produced some very nice stuff apparently but the brewery that they have now is in the old Klipan Sugar Building and this is a really nice old building if you go and have a look at the brewery website you'll see it's one of these really old beautiful looking brickwork factories a very very attractive looking building but it's actually very close to the old Carnegie Brewery in Gothenburg and the Carnegie beer brand is one that you'll find in a lot of the supermarkets and quite easily in Sisti and Belogit here in Sweden but the brew kit that they're brewing on is from Brewfab in Scotland who've supplied, supplied people like Brewdog and Thornbridge some of the really quite famous craft breweries from the UK but in the first year the most interesting point about this brewery is that they apparently brewed 38 different varieties of beer in 10 months so like I say they don't actually have a regular range of beers and all of them are brewed in small batches so it's a it's a brewery that really has the that kind of embraces the home brewing roots where you very rarely produce the same beer so a very very interesting brewery in that regard and apparently this caused them a little bit of a problem in the beginning with introducing their beers to restaurants but now it's kind of turned around because apparently uh, owners were worried about people asking oh do you have this beer from brute from beer bibliotech and then they wouldn't have it. but now people are going into restaurants and asking oh do you have anything new from beer bibliotech so it's, it's kind of worked out in their favor actually but the idea behind beer bibliotech or the name beer bibliotech is that they wanted to brew a wide variety of beers so that their customers can always learn something new about beers and basically it's the whole idea is to be a it's the same concept as a library where you go and learn something new but it's a library about beer hence the name beer bibliotech so quite a clever little play on words actually so if you do want to find out more about beer bibliotech and and all of their different beers that they've done go and have a look at their website they've got a link there where you can search for them and it takes you into a drop box and it tells you all about the hops and malts and everything that go into their beer mainly the hops this one didn't actually have a list of the malts so we'll get on to the actual tasting part of this video now so I hope you enjoyed the little history but let's actually get stuck into this beer now this one it should be really quite interesting so I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork of this one of course, in the next little while as well, you will see Beer Bibliotech wanting to open their own bar and to expand their capacity a bit more. They're still quite a small operation from what I understand, but I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at this before we crack it open. So like I said, this is the Black IPA Cascade and Columbus. Two very nice American hops. Columbus, from what I remember, gives you some really nice floral kind of aromatic flavours and the Cascade has got a nice kind of grapefruit flavour and also some of that nice 
florally aromatic character as well so this should be a really interesting one it says on the side here beer bibliotheque is a small batch brewery in the cultural heart of gothenburg we strive to produce exciting unfiltered and unpasteurized beers at the highest quality being a small batch brewery we are able to brew new and exciting recipes on a regular basis so make sure you keep an eye out for more beers from our extensive library so yeah brewed by beer bibliotheque ab soka Brukit, which is basically sugar Sugar Factory, I guess, 1141-41451, Gothenburg, Sweden. So, yeah, pretty cool. Plain bottle cap on this one, as you can see, and the nice, one of the nice bridges. I'm not, I've never been to Gothenburg, so I can't really speak, but that actually looks like it's one of the nice kind of uh, waterfronts on Gothenburg. So hopefully I can get up there next year sometime, actually, once I get back from my Christmas holidays. But this looks a really nice beer, so very much looking forward to trying this one. So, if you do find yourself in Gothenburg, definitely go and check out Beer Bibliotheque. As you can see, there's a nice smoky opening on this one, and you can actually smell the kind of nice fruity, citrusy, and grapefruity characters of this beer when you open it up. And that's without even paying too much attention to the aroma on this one. It smells absolutely beautiful. And like I said at the start of the video, the Black IPA is a style that I've only kind of recently got into. It was a style I never thought I'd like too much, actually, but now that it, it really, ha I have to admit, it has grown on me. I really do like this style, so I'm always willing to try new varieties of it, and I've heard very good things about beer bibliotech, so should be a very good beer, this one. So as you can see, it's poured a really nice kind of dark ebony rosewood colour, this one. If I just redirect the light there, you can get an idea of the exact colour of this beer. If I put my fingers behind it, there's not... A degree of there's not really a degree of transparency but that may well just be the kind of darkness of the beer you can't see that behind the camera either but it's almost like a kind of coca-cola color there is a little bit of a ruby kind of dark woody colored edge to this one but very attractive looking beer some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass just a few little bits of sediment in the bottom there which is what you always expect from a craft beer and there's a solid finger and a half probably a little bit more when I poured it maybe a two finger head there's a solid kind of beigey creamy coloured head on this one. It looks really nice and quite a few little bubbles just going up towards the bottom of the head on this beer. Very, very attractive looking I have to say. So let's have a look at the aroma on this one. Yeah, so as you would expect, some really nice flavours coming out of the aroma here. I'm expecting this one to have a really nice dark roasted malt base, but the thing that's really standing out in the aroma is the hops actually. So you've got a nice big kind of floral aromatic hop coming out of this one which is something you'd really expect from the Columbus but there's a bit of a smoother grassy character to this one but the, the thing that's really uh, inviting about this beer is the fruity character there's a good bit of, of grapefruit in there but it's actually reminding me a lot of a kind of citrusy orange there's a good citrusy orange character coming out of this one as well very very juicy aroma from this beer and maybe you sugar it up a little bit more you can detect just a little hint of kind of pine resin in there, but that's very, very mild. It's really, this, the aroma of this beer really is more about the fruits, the oranges and the grapefruit, and there is a bit of floral, aromatic and grassy character in this one. Really quite nice smelling beer, and if you just let it settle a little bit more, you can smell more of the kind of chocolatey malts in this one. There's a nice roasty character there, very lightly coffee, but maybe just a well-fired bready aroma. Very interesting, the beer, this one, I have to admit. Smells really, really good. One thing I'm not sure about is how widely you can get these beers outside of Gothenburg, but I would say if you do go and visit the city, buy a few of them up if you enjoy your beer. It's supposed to be very, very good, and I want to find out now, so let's get stuck into this beer. So this one is the Black IPA, the Cascade and Columbus, from Beer Bibliothek in Gothenburg in Sweden. Skål! First thing you'll notice about this beer, it's really nice, but secondly, it's actually quite highly carbonated when it comes into your palate initially. Mm. Yeah, that's a damn good black IPA, I have to admit. It comes across very, very fruity in the, the aroma, but I would say it's actually a bit more forward on the malts than you'd expect. It's really nice. So as I always say, before you start thinking too much about the flavours in this beer, 
just move it around your palate a little bit and let your whole palate adjust to the beer. This one's really nice, but before you start thinking about those individual components of the beer, especially in one of the more complex styles like this, just let your whole palate adjust and enjoy it. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this beer. Really nicely done. So, the middle of your palate is just blanketed with this very, very light, kind of almost like a pale malt, malt base, but it's a lot more dark than that, kind of brown bready character. That just blankets the middle of your tongue right away. But at the same time, I'm saying bready. Bready malts usually have a bit of weight to them. This is very, very light. On top of that, you've got a very dark, kind of roasted, almost like a roasted bread crust flavour to this one actually, but there is a little bit of a coffee character to it as well. But it's very mild, it's not like a kind of coffee stout or anything, but you can feel it right in the middle of your palate. It just lingers there and there is, pardon me, a nice sort of dry and bitter character from the malt base in this one. But on top of that, you can get just a little bit of chocolatey sweetness, but the malt base for me is more about that very light bready character and the more roasted coffee elements or the kind of well-fired bread crust actually. It reminds me of the morning rolls that we always used to get at home with the well-fired top on them. It's quite a, it's almost a little bit of an ashy roasted character that this one has, but it blends in with the other flavours really quite well. Mm. Yeah, so with the hoppy characters in this beer, you're getting everything you would expect from the Columbus and the Cascade. If you move out towards the back corners of your palate, there's a little bit of earthiness in there, but it is very, very mild actually. It's more of a floral, kind of spicy, aromatic character as you move forward in the tongue. And you'll actually feel it just as your tongue starts to curve, there's a good dry, spicy, aromatic character there, but you can feel it building from the very back of the palate, just along the sides there. Really quite nicely done, but around the kind of front curve, it is a bit smoother and a bit more grassy. It's really quite well done. But yeah, just behind the very front curve of the tongue, that's where you're going to get the nice fruity flavours of this beer. So the Cascade, you're always going to get a little bit of grapefruit in there, and you can pick out the little bit of this kind of sour character that you would expect with this one. There is perhaps just a little bit of citrus in there, but for me, the citrus is actually, the citrus and the grapefruit is blending together really quite well, and it, it works with the kind of floral, aromatic, spicy character that was in there. The front of the palate in this one, is really nice. You'll just feel those flavours coming out in a little oily bubble, but everything in this beer just blends together really well. You've got a nice, kind of slightly dry, bitter character around the edge of the tongue, and at the same time, you've got this contrasting, roasted, malty character in the middle of this beer. It works really well. Yeah. It actually gets a little bit juicy into the aftertaste now that you mention it. There's a kind of as I say, that citrusy fruit and that grapefruit character in this one, they just give you this little juiciness as the oily part of the beer comes out, but very well done. And like I say, the flavours in this beer blend together really well. It's, it's highly enjoyable. In terms of the black IPAs I've tried before, this one is perhaps just a little bit more kind of ashy and roasted in comparison with some, but I really like that. I mean, I'm a big fan of the Bamberg Rauch beers and things like that, and I do love proper, proper smoky beers, and this one kind of fits into that category a little bit, but more subtle than some of the, the proper smoke beers that you're going to come across, but very nice nonetheless. Mm. But yeah, as you move into the aftertaste, the things that are sticking there, the nice kind of soft grapefruit flavour, that kind of lingers there. Around the, the, the hoppy parts of the beer, it becomes, it's the tongue stays very wet, but then it just gets a little bit dry around the front with a floral aromatic character and in the middle of the palate you've got that nice lingering roasted slightly ashy bitterness sitting there. It's, it's really nicely done. The flavours like I say blend together very well so if you're a fan of an IPA and you like the, the black beers that are a bit more roasted then this is definitely one you want to go for. No real caramel presence in this one though which is quite interesting. I'm mainly getting that big, that light bready, kind of brown bready aroma flavour in there with a bit of that roasted coffee on top and it works. It's really nice, I have to say that. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer, definitely full bodied. Carbonation initially is quite active and I would say that it smooths out a bit as you go on with this one. 
yeah I think it's fair to say that it is more active than some in this style that I've come across usually they're very very smooth but for me this the carbonation in this black IPA is a bit more active than some of the other ones I've come across not that it's a problem there's a nice quite oily mouthfeel to it it does the oily character helps bring out some of the fruitier aspects of the hops such as the the fruity flavors like I'm talking about very very nicely done um, but it, it does give you a good contrast between the fruity characters and also the roasted flavour that's in the malt base and a little bit of the, the earthy character in the back corner of the palate too and the bitterness that just builds the bitterness in this beer is quite big and it does build as you move into the aftertaste sitting there in the middle of the palate and at the back edges as that floral aromatic character builds too but there is a bit of juiciness from the fruit like I say but no real kind of sweet malty character this one it is a big bitter malty and a big bitter hoppy beer as well so if, if you like your bitter beers then this one is definitely for you but it's really really nice and you know on the basis of this beer I wouldn't hesitate to drink another beer biotech beer the only thing as I say is it's, it's kind of a good thing but it's also a bit of a downside if you try a beer from these guys that you really like you might not see it again bit of a downside but at the same time there's always some really good beers coming out from them and that's the whole point of this brewery so yeah um, if you enjoy a black IPA and you happen to come across this one then give it a go but like I say you might find that a little bit difficult with beer real tech because they're brewing new things all the time but on the basis of this beer I can say very very good brewery and I've heard very good things about them from the Swedish people I know that really enjoy their craft beer so if you do come across one of the beer blue tech beers pretty much pick a style you like and I'm sure you will enjoy it and if you don't you can come and shout at me very very good brewery so do go and check them out but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this beer review it's been really cool to visit another Swedish brewery for you I'll definitely try and get back to beer blue tech in the fairly near future but as always if you have tried this beer yourself please let me know your own thoughts on it in the comments section below and if you have tried any of the other beer blue tech ones please let me know as well interesting to hear from you guys as always until the next beer review please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff go and follow the social media things in the description below but I thank you for watching my beer reviews I hope you're enjoying the Swedish series and I will catch you soon with more beer reviews many more to come from beer bibliotech hopefully and many more from Sweden coming soon Skål